told y'all. I told y'all in my last two videos that Brittany Dawn is a garbage human being and here we are with another update. I'm gonna put a trigger warning right here. This video is going to contain probably more profanity and we're gonna be talking about animal abuse and showing some pictures. So if you don't want to see that, then don't watch this video. I had no intentions on filming a video today, but the internet is ablaze with the current scandal going on with Brittany Dawn. Some of you have even made your way to my comment section on my other videos asking me to please cover this. So we're gonna talk about it. There is so much problematic behavior with Brittany Dawn that it is impossible to cover all of her issues and scandals in one one hour video. So in the first video I did where I actually did a deep dive on her at the very end of that video, I just kind of skimmed by her problematic past when it comes to animals. And we talked about in that video about her husband shooting her dog Brody in the street, even though there were vet clinics five minutes from her house. And pulled over and walked the road off and um, Jordan chased me. He, he parked his car and chased me and just grabbed me before I collapsed on the ground. And, um, and, and then took me inside and I just was broken. Still and, and poor Jordan, like he had to, he had to rush me inside while the other two men watched to make sure no one else came. And once I was inside, like all I heard, I knew, like I knew what was about to happen. And, and Jordan, like all I heard was. This truck revved its engine so loud from the bedroom I could hear it, and I know that's when the gunshot went off, and poor Jordan had to do that for Brody so that. <laughs> so that he wouldn't suffer, and um, there was no saving him. It was so bad, and I'm just so, like, angry. Like, I'm so angry how someone could be so cruel. B Dong is currently in Vail having a well, what I hope to be an absolutely terrible vacation. And that in and of itself is just obnoxious. Her and her Yosemite Sam looking ass husband is up there. They're, they're not even participating in winter activities. They are just taking pictures in the snow. I've been, I don't go to their pages and watch it because I don't want to give them views, but I follow it on the Reddit page and they're just up there frolicking in the snow, decked out in all this fashion and full glam makeup and they're just going out and taking pictures for content because that's what she does. Everything is content. I bet this trip was a write-off for her because it's for content. So the reason we are here is about a pit bull dog that she had named Nico. She got this dog in 2018, had him for a little while, contacted a trainer, shipped the dog off to what was supposed to be a four week training thing. Well, she just never showed back up to pick him up and the trainer ended up keeping him for five months. And Brittany made a video talking about how her and Nico were just not vibing. And I guess the trainer was like, hey, you need to get this dog. Well, instead of going to get the dog, she contacted a rescue called Love Pit. And for a whole five days, she worked with Love Pit trying to rehome this dog. But after five days, she ghosted Love Pit after they saw where she sold the dog on Craigslist. If you have been around long enough, then you would know that Craigslist is shady as f That is not a place that you buy pets from. And there's no way that she vetted these people before selling her dog. All she cared about was dumping her dog. Well, there is a TikTok video that I don't know if I can show because of the music and it being a copyright violation. If I can play it, I will play it. But basically, this dog was found starving to death on March 10th. A rescue went out to get the dog. He was so scared that he was urinating 
and he's skin and bones, starving to death, skin infections. He had obviously been dumped. Well, apparently Nico was microchipped and that's how they found out that this was Brittany Dawn's dog because they went to the vet, pulled up the information from the microchip and she was still listed as the, as the owner. She never even had that information changed. Further proof, she's an irresponsible pet owner. Anyways, that rescue also contacted the trainer, whose name is Brad Bevel, or Brad Beville, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. They reached out to him because Brittany, when getting called out on this on the internet, was blaming Love Pit and was also blaming the trainer. Well, that rescue contacted both of those entities, and I will put their screenshots up here but basically, Brad explains how she abandoned the dog with him for five months, and then when she sold him on Craigslist, the buyers got the dog from Brad, and they were shady as f Well, within 24 hours, the buyers contacted Brad again because they were like, hey, this dog is not a good fit for us. My son is terrified of him. And Brad said, well, this isn't my dog. I can't help you with this. But apparently the trainer was like, not my circus, not my monkey. And Brittany just ghosted everybody because she didn't give a f about the well-being of the dog. Hello, everyone. So yesterday I was involved in a pretty crazy rescue mission, and it has seemed to have just gotten crazier and crazier. So I received a call about this gray and white bully breed mix that had been dropped off at a construction site. He was clearly very malnourished. Um, he was probably close to starving and with the amount of coyotes that we have in our area, he probably would not have made it through the night. So based on the condition this dog was in, I was extremely shocked to find out he had a microchip. So the first thing that we did was reach out to the dog's microchip company. Uh, the microchip company is usually not able to tell us much information. They were able to tell me that they did have contact information for the owner. They were also able to tell me two things. The dog was shipped out of Whitesboro, Texas, and the dog was shipped at Stucky Animal Clinic. Thankfully, I am with the rescue, so I was able to get a little bit more information. Um, and the legal owner's name was Brittany Dawn Davis. I was also able to talk to Dr. Stuckey, who did confirm that this is the legal owner of the dog whose name is Nico. Um, he also did confirm that Brittany Dawn Davis worked for him several years ago as a vet tech at Stuckey Animal Clinic. So if this name sounds familiar to you guys, it probably is. She has been in several scandals. She is a famous fitness influencer who has also been sued by the state of Texas and has been under fire for shooting their family dog. Here is one of several of her Facebook profiles, and this right here confirms that she did work at Stucky Animal Clinic. This is Nico's Instagram page that Brittany Dawn made for him, and this was Nico before she decided to rehome him because he quote-unquote wasn't vibing with her. This is Nico now in the state that I found him. How does a dog get this way? After doing a little bit of research, we did find out that Brittany tried to rehome him responsibly for a whole five days. So we reached out to the rescue that she tried responsibly rehoming him through, and you can pause to read, but here's what they had to say. We also did reach out to Brad, the owner of Beeville, who denied having any assistance in rehoming Nico, who was previously boarded there for nearly a year. We also did end up confirming that she did give Nico away on Craigslist. If you aren't aware, Craigslist is probably one of the worst places you can rehome a dog on. My contact from the love pit is also telling me that Brittany is lying to people and trying to claim that Nico was rehomed through the love pit and through Brad Beville's training. Neither of these are true. He was rehomed through Craigslist. I was able to track down the people that she rehomed Nico through through Craigslist. They were a very sketchy couple who showed lots of red flags from the beginning, but supposedly Brittany did not care. She just wanted to get rid of this poor dog, and sadly, after several years of suffering, this is the state that he is in. Brittany Dawn, we need answers, and you need to be held accountable for this. I have a GoFundMe set up for Nico and his medical care that will be linked to my bio. Any help is greatly appreciated. Here we are. 2023 and this dog has been dumped and is starving to death.
Now, the rescue group does have a GoFundMe. I believe they have reached their goal, but I will also put that in the description if you feel inclined to donate. But after Nico's medical funds are paid for, they are, I believe, going to donate the rest to the Pit Love Rescue. And there was another one, I don't remember it off the top of my head. But while she's in Vail, on vacation, taking pictures with her Jesus girlies and her Yosemite Sam looking ass husband, this blows up on Reddit, on Instagram, on TikTok. Multiple creators have covered it. Like it's, I hope this is finally the thing that does her in. But we all hoped that when she got sued by the state of Texas, but here we are. So she has been busy on her content vacation, deleting comments. Every time a comment pops up, she's deleting it. That's, I don't know how she's had time to even take pictures because people are lighting her ass up and she's just deleting, deleting, deleting. And she made one statement saying that she didn't abandon the dog. I'm sorry, but when you impulsively sell your dog on Craigslist and you don't give a f what happens to that dog after that, you've abandoned your dog. And if she hadn't abandoned her dog when all of this blew up, she's got proof and pictures that this dog is starving. If she gave a shit, she would be saying, oh my gosh, how can I help? She would be donating money. She would be making a statement. She would be doing something other than taking these fake ass pictures on her fake ass vacation. Outside of Nico, since oh. 2012, Brittany Dawn has had nine dogs and I know of one horse. She may have other horses, I don't know, but the main horse, Harley, was also abandoned by her at the boarding facility he was at. And when B Dong left a Yelp review trying to bash the facility, the owner lit her ass up and it was beautiful. So Brittany finally went to visit her horse Harley, took some pictures and then went on Yelp to try to say that she removed her horse due to lack of care and malnourishment. The facility responded, Dear Brittany, I appreciate all reviews, even those I might not necessarily agree with. To be clear to the public, your horse Harley was at our facility for seven months during 2018, and you were late on board once. In 2019, which is when she was getting sued by the state of Texas, out of 12 months aboard, you were late nine times, requiring multiple calls and text messages for payment. In 2020, you were late five out of five months and you threatened if I made you pay, your final payment would write bad reviews on Yelp and Google. I think it is important people know that the before picture of Harley was actually taken after he was at our facility for about a year and taken on one of the maybe five times you visited in the entire time he was boarded with us. The after pictures were taken after he had been sick for weeks with a draining wound and you would not have a vet out, nor did you come see him yourself, McKinney Horseplex actually stepped up and paid the vet in advance to get your horse medical care. At this point, you still had not paid your prior year's vet bill. As you are an absent owner, several of us took Harley over, mainly Jennifer and I. We loved Harley and did the best we could, up to including doing all of his care when he was sick, paying the vet so he would come out. Anyone who wants to find out more about Brittany, Harley's owner, just needs to do a little research on Google, Brittany Dawn Fitness. Best of luck to everyone in finding a facility that is the right fit. Good for them. Good for them for calling her ass out. I brought up the horse because it fits into this whole picture of her having a long documented history of mistreating animals. She gets a dog or an animal, but mostly dogs. She gets a dog for content. And when there's a problem, the dog is gone. It's rehomed, it's 
abandoned, it's murdered in the street. That one was Brody. And this one little dog she had, I'm pretty sure she only got to match her boring beige aesthetic. Her Hazel and Lane Company is a drop shipping scam. Isabella Lanter did a video on that. You can go watch that video. Everything she does is a scam. She is a professional scammer. I don't know how to make it any more clear than that. Yet when you look at her TikTok and Instagram, she has got hundreds of thousands, over a million on TikTok, hundreds of thousands on Instagram and YouTube with these cult-like Stepford wife robots in the comment section thinking that this bitch knows what she's talking about. She hasn't read the Bible. I talked about that on pretty much every video I've done on her. She's not read the Bible. Jesus is content for her. She doesn't exude a kind, giving person in any sense of the way. She just puts on her tarantula eyelashes and takes stupid, boring beige pictures and puts it on the internet for content. Her religious content she does, she just, I'm sure she steals it somewhere else. And I mean, if you look at her YouTube videos and her shorts especially, Whatever trend is hot right now, whatever the, you know, the rage is, is what she's gonna make a video about. She doesn't have to know what she's talking about. She just has to know what is going to get the most views, being Roe v. Wade overturn, LGBTQ rights, uh, trans stuff, the Super Bowl commercial, whatever, Taylor Swift, Kanye West, whatever is being talked about in the media. She's gonna make an uninformed, stupid video on it because it makes her money. It's just a content scam for her. But people eat this shit up and it is mind blowing to me. Like, I don't get it. All you have to do is do a simple Google search of this person and it is all there. She is so problematic. She has her own Reddit thing, subreddit, I don't know. I'm new to Reddit, so I don't know all the lingo, but she's got her own like Reddit thing with just thousands of posts over the years because she is so problematic. Like, it's wild. She briefly had two children in her care when she was doing the foster care thing and she made content out of that. Now that she's not fostering anymore, she's going to Target and making content, buying baby clothes, even though she's not pregnant. She had one miscarriage, and I'm pretty sure she lied about the timing of that. I believe it was very early on, and then the second was just a chemical pregnancy, but she has milked that as much as she can to make content off of it stealing other creator sounds, not giving them credit. If you look at her sounds that she used, most of them will say um, that Britney Dawn is the original sound when it's not. She just steals ideas from other people and copies that. And then because she's got the following, it blows up and makes her money. And the original content creators are left with you know their ideas stolen and they don't get to make any money off of it. It's really gross, it is so gross when you just really dig down into it. Go listen to her podcast, She's Old and Called, but watch it on B. Haney's YouTube page. Don't give Brittany the views, she's not worth it. But she has a podcast where she just yammers on about shit she has no idea and it's just a lot of, yes girl, yes, Jesus is love, yes girl, and her and her friend Farron who is crazy as hell. She's a meth user and posted shit like this. Okay. Okay, another car chat. Y'all, I love you so much. And I can say this because this is my testimony. I believe with my whole heart that the blood of Jesus gave us authority over sickness. All sickness comes from the devil and he was defeated on the cross. When Jesus died, he went down to hell and took back the keys and gave them to his children. I am hearing over and over again, I was sick, I went through the flu, all of this stuff. 
look, I know, I know God has given me a mission, a personal mission to, to share this testimony. My family doesn't get sick because you know what we do that I just have to tell you the difference when you get sick. I know y'all know that feeling you swallow and you're like, <gasps> you know, you know, it was not that one way the last time you swallowed and then you swallowed and you felt it come. And then you start saying, oh my gosh, I'm sick. Uh, it's strep throat. I'm, I'm going to get the flu. It's the flu. And you're speaking those things. The enemy is tempting you with a symptom. As soon as I have that feeling, I say, I am covered by the blood. Devil, you are trespassing. You are trying to come against a legal territory. There is a legal contract in the spirit that says my blood paid for sickness. And I have seen this in my family. Anytime my boys come home from school with a cough, we say, y'all know who, I, who I've shared this with. We say, cough, go, devil, go. And it does not get worse. It does not turn into anything because what you are speaking holds power. It holds power. And I'm telling you, if you would, if you would get the belief in you of the word of God, that it says by his stripes, you are healed. It says in Psalm 107, 20, he sent his word and healed him. If you would declare those things and ha hang on to that as the final authority, that is it. I promise you, you will see a shift. If anyone else says, oh yeah, I had the flu or I think I'm getting the flu. You say no, no to the devil. These girls are crazy. They are absolutely crazy. And I'm gonna finish this up because my goats just found me. <laughs> and I'm sure they're gonna come over here and ruin this. But the way she treats animals is very indicative of who she is as a person. It's like people who don't put the shopping cart up. If you put the shopping cart up, you're probably a decent person. Well, how you treat animals says a lot about you. And she has a horrible, horrible history of mistreating animals. I told you they found me. Oh, and I did find this, which I found very interesting. My biggest pet peeve is when people push aside an animal's pain sickness. How someone treats their animal speaks volumes because they're the most loyal, loving creatures. I will never ask my horses to push through pain and definitely never push them through an injury. That's a solid way to get, come on. Oh my gosh, that's rich coming from Brittany Dawn. Really wish people would stop spending 3K on a dogs, on a dogs. <laughs> really wish people would stop spending 3K on dogs when there are homeless dogs at shelters that need to be adopted for like 50 bucks. How much did you make when you sold Nico on Craigslist? Just curious look okay this video was not planned i now have got to edit it and get it up i'm also writing a book today was supposed to be a writing day but i filmed this instead and then i gotta edit it so i'm gonna get off here but before you britney dawn fangirls leave a hate comment in my comment section do yourself a favor and google her and learn about her before you make yourself look stupid in my comment section. But in my first video I did on her, I made a statement about how I would never step out there and say that I hope someone never has a kid, but I'm gonna take that back. Um, her history with her animals and the way she exploited her foster children that she had for a couple of days and the way she exploits buying baby things when she's not even pregnant, I'm just going to take all of that back. She doesn't deserve a kid. She is just going to use it for nefarious reasons, for her content and for profit. Um, you know, I'm not a religious person myself, but if there is a God, maybe that's the reason that she can't get pregnant. I said what I said. Yeah.